Hi guys, welcome to Breakthrough. We're starting just a couple minutes behind today, but technical difficulties, but I am excited to be with you. It's so excited to come. I'm so excited to come to you every Sunday at 7 p.m. with Breakthrough. Tips, tools, and insights for life. Listen, this is my passion. I was born to do this, to help other people walk in their, in their purpose. And I'm so excited that you joined me today. If this is your first time joining me, thank you so much. I am excited that you you chose to spend Sunday evening just a few minutes with me. I am excited too because we are we are talking about this amazing series called How to Find Your Purpose. Now I'm encouraging you to do a couple things. One, hit share, like, and give me some hearts if you're watching. And yeah, if you're wondering why I'm so excited about being before you, well, this is the girl who stuttered so badly from childhood into adulthood that as I speak with you now without stuttering, I become excited. So I just want you to know that whatever issues you're dealing with, whatever fears, whatever insecurities you're dealing with, there is hope for you. Don't give up on yourself. Do not give up on you. You've got greatness in you, and you are the one who is going to bring that forth. I couldn't say S's and W's, and guess what? My name begins with an S. And every important question you can ask, who, what, when, where, why, begins with a W. And those were the two most difficult questions or letters for me to enunciate. So you ask, what's Breakthrough all about then? Breakthrough is about living and leading with passion and purpose. It's about deliberately influencing people with that spirit of excellence. And don't forget, excellence is, excellence is not just a one-time thing. Excellence is a consistent, intentional endeavor to be great, to do great, to do things well, not just a one-and-done thing. It's about reaching beyond your needs our needs and helping someone else and inspiring others to become who they were created to be. It's about basically moving or going beyond who you think you are. Now, in this program Breakthrough, I share tips, tools, and insights that would hopefully help you to move beyond your challenges, move beyond your hurts, move beyond your insecurities to the place where you need to be. I hope you've got a pen and paper ready because this series is going to help you truly find your purpose and then walk in purpose. So have a pen and paper ready and get ready to rock the boat. Listen, where you're going, you need to be able to rock the boat in, or get off the boat in order to get there. So don't be afraid to rock the boat, meaning be different. Step out and, and, and do something that you haven't done before because that's how you'd eventually walk in purpose. So in this series about finding your purpose, we've been talking about a few things. And the first thing we started to talk about was things that you need to know in order, things that, that you need to know um, about your purpose or basically what your purpose is not and or sometimes what it is but basically things you need to know about your purpose the other thing we are talking about is how to identify that one thing that you specifically were created to do and uh, finally how to go about accomplishing that purpose once you have found it remember the answer to my two questions I set out uh, I asked you when we first began. One, what is your most valuable asset? Your most valuable asset is your mind, the six inches between your two ears. That's your most valuable asset. And what's your greatest investment? What you invest in yourself. Your greatest investment is what you invest in making you become a better person. What you invest in you changing your attitude, changing your mind, changing your style in order to accomplish the purpose in which you were specifically created for. Your greatness is in you. It's, in, it's written in your DNA, but it requires discipline. So your investment in you to be disciplined and, and read and study and learn from others or seek wise counsel, those are things that would help you to accomplish your purpose. Remember that 85-15 slide I showed you, 85% of our success is based on our attitude. 
5% of our success. Can you imagine? And only 15% on our aptitude, knowledge, certificates, degrees, or learning. So if you're saying, well, I don't have a degree, Sharon, you're talking about accomplishing your purpose, guess what? People do not necessarily need a degree to accomplish their purpose. You have 85% of success or a chance of success if you have the right attitude. Now, don't get me wrong, I am a lifelong learner. So I know that learning and having a degree and so on, they, learning is important, education is important, but having the right attitude gets you to your place of, of success more so than the aptitude or the amount of knowledge that you have. I know people who have master's degree and are working for 10 and $12. But if you're walking in your purpose, I promise you that you will make so much more because when you walk in your purpose, people will pay you for the greatness of you using thing, something that may come simple to you. So we'll talk some more about that as we close, but just remember that in identifying and walking in your purpose, one of the greatest things that you need to work on is your attitude. 85% of our success is based on our attitude. So last time we stopped at, um, we stopped at when we, I, I asked you, or I told you rather, that our purpose never changes. It just doesn't. It is written in your DNA. A pen was made for writing and this, the purpose of this pen hasn't changed. It wouldn't change. And so too with you, your purpose is your it's in your DNA it's written in you and it never changes you may change or do different things as you start to walk in purpose but again the essence of what your purpose is that never changes but you go through seasons of change as you aspire to accomplish your purpose so that's where we stopped the last time and that was like number 14 I think the other part uh, the rest of that is number 15 on the things you need to know about your purpose is you find or get your purpose in seasons yeah there are some things that we need to go through before we get to our purpose we're in well we're actually at the tip of summer but we're not out of spring yet but nothing we can do can hold back summer from coming when spring is officially over so even as we go through seasons in natural seasons so too in our own lives we go through seasons before we get to where we want to go to or where we want to be so just remember that we can't stop spring when summer comes and we can't stop summer when the summer when fall comes so just remember that as you go through your purpose that don't try to hold on basically to one season or one person or one thing that has kind of grown out of their season release and move on that's why i said get ready to rock the boat number 16 is your purpose will be tested everything that's been manufactured it's been tested this pen they they scribbled on paper to ensure that it will write before they sent it out and said that this pen is ready to be used so too with your purpose your purpose will be tested there will be failures and frustrations and a process of learning and growing and the one thing you'd need in order to walk in your purpose is discipline there are some things that we just feel we ought to have it or that well it should be easier well not everything we need or want especially our purpose is gonna be it's always gonna be easy sometimes it could be but there's a level of discipline you need to be disciplined as you walk towards your purpose as you grow as you learn you know dr. Festus my pastor in New York would always say that you either play now and pay later or pay now by being disciplined to learn and grow in your purpose and then once you're walking in purpose and you're being paid for your purpose then you can afford to go play and, and travel and do all the great things that you may aspire to do so remember that even as a baby when a baby is learning to walk we have never ha you've never stopped a baby from stumbling and falling when he's trying to walk or said or, or say to the baby well you've walked too much or you're doing it you know too much right now just stop and rest no we encourage the baby to keep going they, they may fall 
but you'll say, get up and try again. And you'll be holding their hands and helping them walk. There is a discipline, a process of learning that's required for the baby from crawling to walking and then running. And you don't stop the baby. So, so to it yourself. You can't stop. You need to consistent to be consistent with that discipline as you learn to walk. You, we all need discipline in order to accomplish our purpose. Nothing in life that is worth anything just happened without some level of discipline and some level of investment. You've got to be vested in your purpose. So I heard this uh this this fable once and this is still, it, it, I'm still talking about discipline, but there's something that goes with discipline that also begins with D, and we need to be aware of it. I've heard this fable of, of Satan having a yard sale, and we're at the time of yard sales around this time of June, and the fable is that he had this yard sale, and on several tables around, he had uh, different items that comes from the devil, Satan, like greed, uh, uh, anger, de uh, murder, adultery, many bad things, hatred and all of those. And they were laid out and they were priced at really reasonable prices where anyone can come and buy them. But in one case on the side, in a glass case, he had this one thing in this, this item and it was the most expensive thing in the entire yard sale. A nice glass case called discouragement. And someone asked, but why is murder and anger and divorce and, and infidelity and all of these so cheap? And this one thing that seemed to be nothing, discouragement, why is this one most expensive? And his response to them was, well, those things are obvious. But this one thing, if I can get into any door, I use this thing called discouragement as a door stopper. And then I can send in murder and infidelity and drugs and anger and, and, and all the other sins he can send in, but he uses th that one thing called discouragement to get in. So I am telling you that no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're at in life right now, know that discouragement will come, but that is of the devil and that will not get you to your purpose. Remember this fable because if you become discouraged and stay discouraged, that's going to hold you in a place that will not get you to your purpose. And everything we are talking about, life is about accomplishing purpose. So although discouragement may come, now that you know that it's going to come and Satan, is, Satan uses it as his most valuable tool, I'm encouraging you to be aware of it and don't let it stop you. Number 17 uh, in things you need to know about your purpose is that your, well, I, I think I spoke about your purpose comes in seasons and you just cannot stop it from happening. So know that and walk forward confidently in accomplishing your purpose. Failure will come. Failure is part of you accomplishing your purpose. And I believe in the original series, failure was number 19. Failure, our response to failure is most important because we need to learn how to fail and fail forward. Failure is necessary in you accomplishing your purpose. No one, absolutely no one has accomplished their purpose without some failures along the way. So be aware that failures will come, but Think about walking forward even as you fail because that's all that, that's what excellence is about too. Excellence is not just is not just that you did something excellently one time and that's the end of it. It's a consistent persistent thing. So too with as failure comes, know that you got to consistently get up again and move forward. Failure tests our character. Failure tests our integrity. It tests our our attitude towards our passion. Failure truly moves us into our purpose or moves us away from our purpose. Because if you fail and say that, I hate failing, so I'm not going to fail again, I'm not going to try it again, then you have, you have failed twice. So remember that failure is the price we pay to find our purpose. Failure is the price we pay as we walk towards our purpose. So expect to fail and don't give up. You know, in Matthew, uh, I was reading last week in Matthew, Matthew 25, I believe 14 through 30, and it was talking about 
uh, the parable of the talents. And this is important because failure and fear, I believe, are the two things that people hold on to the most and feel, well, oh, I can't do that. I am afraid. But in the parables, uh, one person was given five talents, the other was given two, and the other was given one. The one that got the five talents in the Bible, he went, invested those five talents and got five more. The one who got two talents went and invested and got two more. The one who got one talent, guess what he did? He went and he buried it. So when his master came back and said, well, okay, I gave you five talents, two talents, one talent. What did you do with it? The one that had five talents said, well, I invested and here I am, 10. Here is your return on your investment, basically. The one that got two talents, he said, here, I invested and I got two more. And the one that got one talent, he said, well, I know that you're a hard man and, and I, you know, maybe he was feeling, well, I, I, I'm afraid to do anything with this one talent. So he buried it and he only had one to show. What did the master do? He took it away from the one who had one and didn't do anything with it and gave it to the one who had 10. My thing to you, what I'd like you to remember about this is whether you have one gift, one talent, one thing that you do well, or 10. What you do with it is really what matters. Your purpose could be hidden in failure. And if you are holding on to failure or fear and say that, and, and you're saying, well, I'm not going to do anything with this because I'm afraid, guess what? More than likely you could lose it. That's what happens. So remember that your purpose should be able to bring hope and help someone else. Again, it's written in your DNA. Fear and failure may come. You cannot be afraid to use what you have. And you cannot be afraid because someone do something with it. In I went dark, but I was given this plant recently in a box. It came in a box. This is the box it came in. And this is what, this is what it looked like, maybe half the length of this, two weeks ago. It came in the box with the dirt, not wet, just you know, dirt. And I planted it in the pot and I watered it and it's grown. It was half the size and it has grown. If I had held this little plant in this box and not do anything with it, it would not be this size now. This is what it's going to cut. It's going to be when it's fully grown, but this is what it's looking like now. Not much of anything, right? But if I continue to water this, and I'll show you, I'll have it on air with me, I'll show you. If I continue to water this plant every week as the, as the instructions and direction says, I'm expecting to get this as the outcome. But if I choose to bury it and just not do anything with it, not water it and just leave it sitting there, I shouldn't expect to get a beautiful blossoming flower. So too with your gifts. If you expect to have your gifts blossom, you need to water them. You need to do something with them. Start doing something, although you may not quite know what to do. Start with the things you do best. Don't just discount the gifts and talents within you because you feel when you do it so well or it's so easy for you. No. See, how can I use what I do best to be able to help someone else? And it's not always easy. I'm telling you that because even right now, as I come on air, I wonder, oh my gosh, are you going to stutter this time? After all, you stuttered for most of your life. So fear will come, but are you going to allow that fear to defeat you or are you going to do something about it? Fear of what people have said to you, what your parents have said to you. They may have said words to you that you could never forget. You may be thinking, oh my gosh, well, I'm black, so I can't do this. Or you may be thinking of your color, of your race, of your finances. I don't have enough money to get this done or I'm not good enough. Family members have said things to you that may still be resounding in your mind, but we need to move past that. Or you may be wondering, well, my family background is not the best, or what would people say if they found out X, Y, or Z about me? Listen, fear could be paralyzing, like like uh, PTSD, for example. But I'm telling you, it's been said that, that fear is false evidence appearing real. And I know to some people who are experiencing fear, they're not thinking about false evidence. It feels real to them. What is your deepest fear? What are you afraid of why you're not doing something with who you are, with what you've got right now? Nothing can stop you. So what are you thinking should stop you? Marion 
Williamson. She's a former presidential candidate and author of the book Return to Love. She says this, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about you shrinking so others, so that other people wouldn't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us, in our DNA. It is not just in some of us, it's in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we basically unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. So as we liberate ourselves from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. If you want to learn more about that, check out Marion Williamson's book on return to love. Can I tell you, there's nothing that you need to fear but fear. And fear is, is not of God. And if you know that fear is not of God, then you truly be looking or not of your creator. Think about it. In Isaiah 41, 10 says, God, God says, fear not. I will help you over 365 times, one for every day of the year. It's written in my owner's manual, your Bible. It says, fear not. I will help you. Fear not. I am with you. He keeps saying it over and over again because he understands that sometimes we will not want to go forward because we may be afraid or fearful of one thing or another. How to accomplish your purpose is not taught in school. It can only be found in your owner's manual. So I'm encouraging you, one, to read your owner's manual, two, learn how to fail and fail forward. Failure is the price we pay to accomplish or achieve success and accomplish our purpose. So don't be afraid to fail. Many times the thing we fear most never come to pass. So I encourage you when fear comes, say, do you know what? I'll deal with that fear tomorrow or do it even when you feel afraid. Your purpose will be tested and fear comes to test it. So step over that and go forward anyway. Rock the boat. Rock that fear out of you or step out of the boat. Let that fear stay behind and you move ahead. Now I'm going to close here and next week we'll continue this session on, on how to accomplish your purpose. But <clears throat> really, we are talking about practical steps you can take to find your purpose in the midst of failure. I have a couple things that I wanted. I want you to do. One, write down three things that you love to do, that you do really, really well, that people tell you, well, three things you love to do naturally. You just love to do them. Three things that people say you do well. Three things that people say you do well. Oh my gosh, you know, you know, Susan, you really do this so well. Or Rose, you really do this so well. You're so good with people. Or you, you do this crochet as if it's nothing to you. Write down those three things. Things you know you do well. Three things people say you do well or your family have said you did well. Three things that you used to do as a child that just caused you to lose track of time. Three things you did as a child that caused you to lose track of time. And finally, three things that you just despise doing. You just hate doing those three things. If you can have those ready for our next session, you'll be well ahead of the, of the game. Again, three things you like doing, three things you've been told that you do well, three things that you did as a child that caused you to lose track of time, and three things that you truly hate, despise, I hate to use the word hate, but three things you despise doing, okay? Like, really like, despise doing. Remember those three, write down those three things because based on those three things, I will help you pull your purpose out of them. So until next time on Breakthrough, 
next Sunday at 7 p.m. Remember, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, your creator is saying this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Until next Sunday at 7 p.m., walk in purpose.